Today we are going to study about different characteristics of DC generators. Mainly there are three uh, important characteristics curves uh, which we have studied in DC generators. If either it is self-excited self generator or separately excited generator, generally we have three characteristics. The first one is open circuit characteristics that is a plot between generated EMF and field current okay and the in next one is internal or total characteristics and which is drawn between E. E is a uh, EMF which is at the terminal of R meter which is less than EG by minus thing the drop due to R meter reaction from EG you will get E. So that E versus armature current plot is known as internal characteristics and the external characteristics is terminal voltage V versus IL characteristics ok so mainly there are three characteristics first one is open circuit characteristics open circuit characteristics means within the name itself it's uh, there is no load in that DC generator the circuit is open armature winding is open so a no load characteristics is open circuit characteristics. Internal and total characteristics is uh, which is in loaded case but here the E is we can be cannot be directly calculated because we know that if there is a load there will be some uh, armature reaction drop in the um, armature. We have already studied what is armature reaction, which is the effect of flux, uh, effect of armature flux on main flux. So due to that, some e, uh, generated EMF will be reduced from EG to E. So that E versus IA is internal or total characteristics. Okay. Next one is external characteristics, which is the load characteristics. Okay. So first we will explain open circuit characteristics which is also known as OCC. This characteristics is also known as OCC characteristics, open circuit characteristics. So figure show, um, I will show the relationship between the field and exciting current. Okay. When it, Okay, sorry, it's on white color. You can see here, characteristics curve means one of the variable is represented on x-axis. Here we represent the current on uh, x-axis, field current on x-axis and generated EMF on uh, y-axis. Okay, and generated EMF EG on the y-axis. And this characteristics curve we plotted at a given constant speed. We know that in a generator we give um, um, a mechanical input, mechanical rotation by using prime mover. So prime mover speed should be uh, constant speed. And this uh, curve is also known as magnetization curve or um, magnetization curve or what no load saturation curve. Uh, and no load saturation curve means there is no load on the generator. So to draw OCC, the field current IF, first we increase the field current. Okay. In practical, uh, practically we increase the field current by reducing the field resistance and um, from increased from, so by exciting field, uh, by giving a field excitation, we can improve the field current from zero to a maximum reading of terminal voltage across the armature at a no load, then corresponding e generated EMF should be taken. Okay. So the speed of the prime mover is kept constant, that is the prime mover will be rotated at a rated speed. And the generated EMF at that time, generated EMF is proportional to field current. We know the equation EG is equal to phi Z and P by 60A. So in this, in this you know number of poles, number of parallel path conductors, and um, if the speed is also constant because we uh, we are 
rotating the prime over at a constant speed what happened all these components become a constant so now eg is proportional to what only the flux so if there is a change in flux the eg will be increased so and magnetizing force h is proportional to field current therefore if the curve is just similar to magnetizing force um, proportional also um, we know that the magnetization curve is just a slow version of particle so the curve will be just like a what magnetization bh loop curve for the material of electromagnet so its shape is practically same for all generators whether it is separately excited or self excited or a generator is separately excited ayalum self excited ayalum its uh, occ characteristics nu parayunnathu its shape is same aayirikkum okay so main aayittu nammal orkanda kaaryam um, open circuit characteristics nu parayumbo adu open aayirikkum armature winding open aayirikkum there is no load connected on the uh, um, armature winding load connected aayirikkilla so circuit closed alla so um, there is a nice nammal load kodukkunnilla ലോഡ് കൊടുക്കുന്നില്ലാത്തത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അവിടെ നോ ലോഡ് സാച്ചുറേഷൻ കേവ് എന്നൊരു പേര് കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് ഓ സി സിക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഓൺലി ദ ഫീൽഡ് എക്സൈറ്റേഷൻ ഇത് മാത്രമല്ല അവിടെ വരുന്നുള്ളൂ അപ്പൊ അതിന് മാഗ്നറ്റൈസേഷൻ കേവ് എന്നും പറയും ഓക്കെ സോ ഈ ഒരു പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് എങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യുന്ന വെച്ചാൽ വി വിൽ ഇൻക്രീസ് ദ ഫീൽഡ് കറണ്ട് ആദ്യം നമ്മൾ ഫീൽഡ് കറണ്ട് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യും ഫീൽഡ് എക്സൈറ്റേഷൻ കൂട്ടിക്കൊണ്ടു വന്ന് ഫീൽഡ് കറണ്ട് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യും ഫീൽഡ് കറണ്ട് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ജനറേറ്റഡ് ഇ എം എഫ് എത്രയാണെന്ന് നോട്ട് ചെയ്യാം സോ വി വിൽ ഡൂ ദിസ് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ഇൻ ദ ലബോറട്ടറി സോ ഇൻ ലബോറട്ടറി കണ്ടീഷൻ വി നീഡ് എ പ്രൈം മൂവർ ഓക്കെ പ്രൈം മൂവർ മീൻസ് ഐദർ ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി എ ഡീസൽ എൻജിൻ ഓർ സ്റ്റീം എൻജിൻ ഓർ എ ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടർ സോ ഇൻ ലബോറട്ടറി വി യൂസ് ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടർ ആസ് എ പ്രൈം മൂവർ ഫോർ എ ഡി സി ജനറേറ്റർ നമ്മളൊരു മെക്കാനിക്കൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഇൻപുട്ട് ആയിട്ട് കൊടുക്കണമല്ലോ അതിനുവേണ്ടി നമ്മൾ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുക ഒരു ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടർ ആണ് സോ വൺ ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടോർ ടേക്കൺ ഫോർ ഗിവിംഗ് ഗിവിംഗ് മെക്കാനിക്കൽ എനർജി സോ ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടോർ ഷാഫ്റ്റ് ഇസ് കപ്പിൾഡ് വിത്ത് ഷാഫ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡി സി ജനറേറ്റർ ഓക്കെ ജനറേറ്ററിന്റെ ഷാഫ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് കപ്പിൾ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടാവും സോ വെൻ ദ ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മോട്ടോർ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് റൊട്ടേറ്റ് this generator shaft also short rotates so armature winding on the generator will cut the magnetic flux produced in the um, um, poles poles fixed on the yoke so it cuts the flux means it induces an emf so by changing the field excitation and that means the field winding is kept separate in a separately excited generator or in in a self excited generator and we give Uh, by changing the resistance we um, we also produce more excitation and field current will be increased so if the field current increases um, the magnetization curve produces will be proportional to uh, the flux because we know that eg is proportional to flux so the curve will be almost like this okay the voltage available at the terminals of armature is always less than eg because next one is um, sorry the next one is internal or total first we have studied open circuit characteristics generally next one is internal characteristics or total characteristics so in which the voltage generated uh, is not actually eg the at the terminals of armature it is always less than eg because of the voltage drop in armature and voltage drop due to demagnetization effect okay so there will be two drops in the armature we know that there is armature resistance so there will be i a r a drop is the okay i a r <coughs> armature drop means i a r a drop and voltage drop due to demagnetization effect of armature reaction demagnetization effect will produce a weakening of flux and it will reduce eg okay generated am so in there will be some voltage that is e which is less than eg okay so e 
E is the EMF induced in the armature considering the demagnetizing effect of armature reaction. So E is EG minus voltage drop due to armature reaction. So therefore E is always less than EG. This characteristic shows the relationship between the EMF E and armature current I. So E versus I A is internal characteristics or total characteristics. So this characteristics is the interest mainly to the designer. So in the in for designer only uh, we use this internal or total characteristics because the armature reaction cannot be calculated directly. It cannot be obtained directly by performing experiment because it is not possible to measure E with a voltmeter. We have a practical experiment to conduct the armature reaction. We calculate the IR drop to calculate the internal designer calculation. So, we have a internal or total characteristics actually. We practically do the direct type of voltmeter E in the term. So, it's only used for the designer purpose. It's a calculation which will be calculated armature reaction and we plot the characteristics. Designing area is not a plot in the area. But we have to select any DC generator in a particular application. We have to select the external characteristics. So the next one is external characteristics. So external characteristics means this curve gives the relationship between output terminal voltage and the load current IA. So the terminal voltage V can be obtained by subtracting armature voltage drop IARF from E. So therefore V will be always less than E. So external characteristics lies below the internal characteristics. So this characteristic is most important while selecting an appropriate generator for a specific application. Okay. And it can be plotted by actually loading the generator and by taking simultaneous reading of the terminal voltage V and load current I. Okay. So external characteristics means it is the characteristics which is drawn between voltage V and I. That is terminal voltage V um load current I um which is the number equal to. Okay. So first we will study OCC. OCC is the number of no load condition. If there is no load. Now the condition is right at the constant speed. And speed is the constant. Then we increase the field excitation from 0 to a particular value. So, one zero on the increase here in the middle of the magnetization curve or the curve on the OCC kit. And then we change here in the practical experiment. We have a prime over on J. We have a practical lab. We have an induction motor start. Induction motor on the shaft. Generator on the shaft is connected. So, generator starts rotating. Then, we will connect this resistance in series with the field wide. So, we will give first maximum resistance over them. Then our resistance decrease either way remain and such a field current increase. At higher resistance, field current will be less. Then when we decrease the resistance, field current will be increased. So field current increase, IF increase in an answer to generated EMF increase either way. Then we have to go to OCC. Then, External characteristics are under the practical experiment. We will connect a load across the armature. Armature across the load connect. Okay. A load will be connected across the armature. Then, what happens? When we connect load, there will be load current IL. Okay. So, we will connect a voltmeter to measure terminal voltage across load V and this IL. So if we um, plot a curve between IL and V, we will get the load characteristics. But for load characteristics, we will get the field current constant. 
IF should be constant for a load characteristic. But, uh, first, we will field excitation increase in the rated flux. Rated flux we will generate EG up to a constant value, EG. So, we will generate the field excitation increase in the EG number 230 volt. Okay. So, we will generate 230 volt and some work. Curve, that is, we voltage already a particular value on that. So, actually, it should be a constant value if there is no losses. But uh, due to armature drop, there will be a small drop of EG when it is loaded. So, curve has to dropping characteristics. Then, we load code there will be armature resistant drop also. So, and another curve will be again dropping characteristics. So this will be the external characteristics. Or dropping characteristics. Okay. Then now we are going to study each experimental um, in detail for each separately excited generator and also self-excited generator. Okay. First we are going to study separately uh, characteristics of separately excited generator. Hmm? First, open cell tool characteristics. So mainly three type characteristics are the OCC, internal characteristics and external characteristics. So for separately excited character, uh, uh, generator, OCC curve will be like this. And we know that it is similar to a magnetization curve. And the experimental setup for that, that is circuit diagram will be like this. So, so, to measure the field excitation, we use an ammeter which is in series with the field winding and for varying the field excitation, we use a potentiometer. The DC supply is given separately to the uh, field winding, so it is called separately excited generator and the armature is open, there is no, uh, that means there is no load in the circuit. To measure the voltage generated across um, the armature, we connect a voltmeter across it. Okay. So to draw this curve generator, um, sorry. To draw this curve, um, the generator is run with the help of prime mover at a constant speed. So we should remember the speed should be constant. Uh, of the time over the exciting or field current IF the field current IF the current flowing through this field current is varied from 0 to a maximum by potentiometer by changing this potentiometer uh, and its value can be read by this ammeter connected in the field circuit okay so by varying this potentiometer we can increase the field current and note down this value and the terminal voltage Mm, of the generator at a no load that is EG can be noted for various values of IF. Okay, for from this uh, reading we can plot a characteristics like that IF is taken on X axis and EG on Y axis. Then by increasing the field current you can draw a characteristics curve like that. And there are some property for this curve. We can note uh, we can study like this the characteristics. So here, the EMF generator, mm. can see here, the EMF generated we know that EG is equal to 5 Pn by 16 to Z is the equation, all, all other terms are constant, N is also constant, so P and Z by A and 60, these terms are constant, so E prop EG is proportional to 5. And Thus, the generated voltage is directly proportional to flux per pole and it depends on the field current IF only. So, therefore, when the field current is increased from initial value, the flux phi and hence generated EMF EG is shown, um, characteristic shown like this. So, here you can see there is a gap from the zero. That means if the field current is zero, generated EMF is not zero, there will be a value OA. This OA is produced due to residual magnetics. So we can note following important points on this curve. First one is this OA. When the field current is uh, zero, a small voltage is produced. That is shown by this OA. 
was shown by this value. This is due to the property of magnetic material called residual magnetism. We have already uh, studied our hysteresis loop. That means the magnetic uh, magnetizing force which is uh, lagging behind the magnetic field. VH loop we have studied VH loop if you increase the magnetic flux density the magnetic field intensity will if you magnetize an electromagnet first it magnetize to a uh, magnetic field intensity will increase then it become saturated then if you demagnetize it and I will not generate on the poles in a magnetize it first. So it will magnetize to a maximum value and the pole um, flux becomes saturated and magnetic field intensity becomes constant. So the magnetizing, when we remove that uh, excitation, we know that electromagnets are not uh, permanent magnets. They, we have to excite it and magnetize it. So that if we remove that excitation, it becomes demagnetized. I'm going to code the excitation current to remove the field current to zero as you can in some version. Then magnetization produce out. So first the curve becomes the maximum, then it drop, drop the two and zero. When the field, field remove the energy, magnetic flux is zero, but magnetizing force will not reach zero. Okay. I'm going to add field current to the IF, for a particular value to the IF. At, the, at that time, it becomes saturated. In order to increase it, more not. Then, if we put zero, we can remove it. We can remove the current. We can remove the current. We can remove the excitation. Remove it. So, magnetic flux density is zero. So, magnetizing force at, at zero value, it will not reach. There will be some value of magnetizing force on that electromagnet. In that material, we can retain the property of the magnetic property. We have to apply the opposite direction to the opposite direction. We have to apply the zero load. So, in practically, in the electromagnet, there will be some magnetic flux retaining on that material itself. So, we have to retain the flux. There will be, so, the correct flux in the poles will end. That will be only a small value of 5% of the freighted flux. But that flux, when the armature rotates, armature winding rotates, which cuts that, that flux. That flux is known as residual flux, which is produced on the magnetic material due to this residual magnetism. So, maintaining some magnetic flux on the magnetic material, that property is known as residual magnetism and this, that flux is known as residual flux. And when the armature winding cuts this residual flux, it induces an EMF which is known as residual voltage. Okay, so this voltage value is known as residual voltage, OE. And up to this point B, so from this to point B, what happening when the IF increases, EG also proportional to that IF and the curve is linear. So the reluctance of here at this point from A to B, the reluctance of iron part is much smaller than the reluctance of air gap. Air gap reluctance in a column, iron part reluctance is very So the flux will uh, proportional to field current. And um, the reluctance of air gap is constant. So when we increase the field excitation, Reluctance of an iron path will not be a small value, it will increase, so the curve B become almost not constant at this point. Okay, so when the reluctance of iron path cannot be neglected, it will increase the excitation. So after point C, the pole becomes saturated. So field excitation kuti karma poles is saturated out. So after this point C, the pole becomes saturated and generated EMF remains almost constant. So if we increase IF, the EG will not increase much. It becomes almost constant after this point C. Okay. Then 
Next one is internal or external characteristics of separately excited generator. So must we have studied OCC characteristics of separately excited generator. Next one, uh, this separately excited generator, the internal characteristics. We know that internal characteristics cannot be drawn directly by using a practical experimental, con by conducting practical experiments. So first we draw uh, external characteristics. So to draw this curve, the um, circuit diagram, um, circuit characteristics, circuit diagram will be like this. Uh, for that, the field is uh, field excitation is given by a separate uh, DC supply by connecting a potentiometer across it to vary the field excitation and to draw uh, to calculate the, uh, or to note down field current. We use an ammeter here and to note down uh, voltage generated across armature or note in generator across armature voltage terminal voltage to note down terminal voltage we use a voltmeter here and to note down the load current we use is this ammeter okay so to draw this curve the generator is run with the help of a prime mover at a constant speed so in external characteristics also the prime mover speed should be rated speed and it should be constant and the load is generated uh, the load is gradually increased in steps by connecting load we increase the load step by step from no load to full load okay so first number your experimental conduct practical lab is saying that the chain is the first thing that prime over started prime over the speed of rated speed and constant right way then we increase this field excitation okay field excitation increase here that means by moving this potentiometer we can increase the field current and note down the generated emf generated emf should be before giving load, first we will load connect before giving load, we generate a voltage EG across it, that EG or E, E in produce A, okay. That voltage should be rated to a rated value, if it is a 220 volt, we will increase same by increasing field excitation, we, um, we set up a voltage on generator, okay. So first we set this voltage, then that means at the rated value of voltage we have given our rated flux okay so rated flux is set there then we load then we connect this load to in the generation number load connect here okay so first to the minimum load this load in the either resistive load or lamp load connect here or generator load then first to the lamp on j first to the lamp on j which way load or to or we use that in a connected one right here. Upper particular load resistance are in a cross one no. So there will be some terminal voltage. So this voltmeter will read terminal voltage and this current will increase load current. We note down these two values. Then when we increase the load again, number of lamps turn on J in the putty condition. So load increase in. The load increase in an answer voltage drop produce and the load current will increase when we increase the load load current will increase so load current increase in the corresponding idle voltage terminal voltage note down here so we can draw a characteristics curve like this this red characteristics curve on an external curve on an external characteristics curve so load current is taken on x-axis terminal voltage on y-axis and the curve is uh, dropping characteristics so the load is gradually increased in steps from no load to full load terminal voltage of the generator on load b can be noted for various values of load current i l so from these reading external characteristics can be plotted so this curve indicates how terminal voltage v changes as the load increases from zero to full load keeping the speed constant and field current constant. So remind these points on in external characteristics. And what are in separately excited generator the field current is independent of the load current. So this field current is independent here. Um, so because it is separately excited by another DC supply. So if there is no armature reaction 
we assume if there is no armature reaction the curve will be like this a dotted line okay so, uh, because the terminal voltage v will be equal to eg and it will remain constant from no load to full load if the increase load then also eg will become constant if, if there is no armature reaction drop so However, in practical generator, these drops are present. Armature reaction will cause a decrease in voltage due to demagnetization effect and it depends on load current. When load current increases, armature reaction drop also increases. So, considering the effect of armature reaction only, the curve between, so by calculating armature reaction, we can minus that drop from EG. So, that voltage drop minus here so you will get E this E will be less than EG auricular drop minus E then so um, considering the effect of E in armature reaction only the curve between terminal voltage E and armature current IA will slightly drooping as shown by curve 2 the curve 2 in the blue line that is internal characteristics and by considering another drop, if you have a drop model, R major IARI drop. So, by considering that drop also, curve 2 minus IARI drop will give curve 3, that is the external characteristic. So, this red line represents the external characteristic curve 3, and this curve represents curve 2 represents internal characteristics. And if there is no voltage drop due to armature reaction and the ohmic drop IARA, then the curve will be like this dotted line. That is, it should be constant. So, we have to, in a practical generator, we have to consider both these drops. That is, voltage drop due to armature reaction will be present. Also, IARA drop is present. So, curve 3 will give the external characteristics. So, this external characteristics indicates that terminal voltage falls as the load of the generator increases. So, there will be a drop in voltage in external characteristics. Now, we are going to um, study uh, open circuit and self uh, open OCC internal and external characteristics of a uh, self-excited generator in the next, I will continue in the next class. Thank you.